us in this new edition of France in Focus. I'm Nadia Shabi, and this week we delve into the issue of employment. We're here in the northeast of Paris, where the Cité des Sciences et de l'Industrie Museum offers an entire area dedicated to helping people find work. But before we look into that in more detail, let's take a look at a few preconceptions regarding the French and their attitude to hard graft. The French love working. 82% say they're happy in their jobs. 39% would continue working even if they won the lottery. Contrary to popular belief, 87% of French employees work 35 hours a week or more. 33% work more than 40. Two thirds feel their jobs fit around their social and family lives. But it's not all roses. Night shifts, repetitive tasks and challenging environments mean that 37% say they suffer from physical pain, often or all of the time, because of their work. Another workplace problem, half of employees feel they have too much work to do a proper job of it. The outcome, 36% say they're burnt out. The survey also suggests that many would like to have more autonomy and flexibility. Work is also a place to forge relationships. Three quarters of employees report making friends and 13% have taken things a little further. Well, we're here in the Cité des Métiers, or Career Hub, where advisors are on hand to guide visitors seeking practical information or wanting to explore career options. On offer are a wide range of workshops, online tutorials and one-to-one -one sessions, a precious resource considering that unemployment is currently at around 10% here in France. Well, across the country, local authorities are seeking novel approaches to help people back into work. Here's one original solution currently being tested in Brittany. Daniel Maillard is being trained for his new job. Roofer for several decades, he's now trimming hedges. For him, the job title isn't that important. What is, is that he's working again. It's a relief to work again after a year and a half of unemployment. People, even unemployed people, they look at you differently. <laughs> Daniel Mayel got back on the job market due to zero unemployed, an initiative tested in the area where he lives. The idea, launched six years ago by an association that fights poverty, is to use unemployment benefits to create jobs and pay salaries. They recycle waste used by local companies, they also clean vehicles, organize workshops. No one would pay for these things because they don't generate money. But if those services cost very little, then some companies would pay for them or they'd hire someone to do them. If they hire long-term job seekers, associations or small businesses get the funding from regional authorities and the state. Parliament approved the creation of a special fund to help finance the plan last year. Every year, 15 million euros are injected into the program. Each job costs about 20,000 euros. They help secure schools. They're in charge of maintenance, clearing ponds, for example, and other tasks. The test will last five years. If results are conclusive, the project will continue and be extended to the whole country. Well, sometimes the tables are turned and employers are the ones left pulling out all the stops in the hopes of attracting and holding on to the best candidates. Think unlimited holidays, dirt cheap accommodation or help finding a job for the applicant's partner. Too good to be true? Take a look. How can businesses attract the best candidates to apply for the jobs they advertise? Increasingly, it takes a bit of imagination. Neovia is a company specializing in animal nutrition. Its CEO is looking to hire 300 people over the next five years, but he's got a problem. The headquarters are located here in Vannes in southern Brittany, far from any big cities. For many would-be candidates, that's a deal-breaker. We've missed out on big hiring opportunities. There were people who were working in Paris and who thought that coming to work for Neovia was a good idea. 
But they had wives who were either dentists or lawyers who wouldn't be able to move, and we just didn't know how to respond to that. But now he's found a solution, helping the spouses of his potential employees find work locally, with the help of a website that he produced in conjunction with a number of other companies. A similar challenge faced a high-tech materials company here in the Marne region of France. It hires dozens of people every year. In order to attract competent employees to a rather rural area, the CEO had an idea to house them on site. Here we are in the dining room. It's one of the communal areas. On the first floor, employees have individual bedrooms, but they share bathrooms and a kitchen. It's not very expensive, so it enables us to get settled and get to know the area before we take the time to find our own place. At just 150 euros a month, the rent's unbeatable. Yeah, it definitely helped me make my choice. It's definitely a plus when you compare it to other employers. This employee perk is costing the business 60,000 euros a year, but it's worth it. If we used hiring agencies to find the 20 to 50 employees we need each year, we'd have to pay them. In order to recruit only the best, this human resources agency aspires to being the ideal employer. The company offers an advantage that's totally unique in France. Unlimited holidays. Laurent Sebarak is in his trial period, but he's already taken two weeks holiday. It's really great. In less than a month, I'll be going on holiday with my family. In any other company, I wouldn't have been able to plan it so soon. More than half of French companies complain about hiring difficulties. It seems that getting inventive is the way forward. Well, just around the corner from the Cité des Métiers is this library and fab lab workshop, a place where visitors can learn new skills or share tools such as this 3D printer. The co-working experience has flourished as a result of that other trend, slashing. It's become the international buzzword for a new generation of workers and France isn't immune. Slashers use their skills to hold down multiple jobs, a balancing act that allows more independence and diversity, but above all, some extra earning power. In France, they call them slashers, people trying to keep two or more careers going simultaneously. Philippe works as a photographer a lot of the time. But he's found there's little money to be made in the industry these days. Today, photography brings in just enough to live on if I was only doing that. So if I'm able to do something else at the same time, it would be a shame not to make the most of it. Having two jobs does mean that Philippe has long days, sometimes working up to 13 hours. But as a web developer slash photographer, he can normally earn around 4,000 euros a month. Some do even more than two jobs. Jean-Maxime works mainly as a marketing consultant. He comes up with ideas to help companies sell products. But he's always looking to diversify. Having a job for life is not for him. When we get bored of doing our jobs or we don't earn enough or whatever it might be, I think my generation has a more spontaneous nature. We want to change and try new things. John Maxime has also created his own T-shirt brand, which he sells in department stores. At home, his time is spent filling up cardboard boxes for online clients. And he also organizes parties and meetups for single people. Alan's a bit older than these young slashers. He's worked as a geometry specialist at the same company for 30 years. But under his work clothes, Alan has a secret. He's a yoga teacher. He passed the qualification to become a teacher while doing his day job. Now on evenings and weekends, he takes classes. When he retires, he hopes to do it full time. I think that at a certain age, we understand our interests better. We know where we want to go more than when we're young. So we can invest ourselves more and get more out of a second job. Making a better living and escaping the routine, that's the aim behind the slasher way of life, a concept already familiar in other countries that has taken its time to reach France. 
Well, from outside the incredible dome complex of the Giard, it's time for me to say goodbye. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned to France Get. The death of social media star Kandil Baloch last year stunned Pakistan, and the fallout is still being felt today. Her brother confessed to strangling her in a so-called honor killing. At the time, many feminists spoke out in protest, only to receive online death threats in return. For Negat Dad, a lawyer specialized in digital rights, this was the trigger to start the country's very first cyber harassment hotline. I myself started burning out of hearing all these complaints, dealing with them, resolving the issues, talking to the platforms that how we can deal with the abuse that women are facing, how their lives are at risk. Since its debut in December 2016, the hotline has mostly dealt with cases of blackmail with nude photos, either real or photoshopped. But in this conservative, patriarchal society, for some women, just having an online presence can be dangerous. The Facebook profile picture is downloaded by someone and that someone is using that picture to harass them that, oh, I know you belong to this family and I'm, if I'm going to tell your family that you are on internet, they can, you know, maybe just end your education or maybe they can, you know, so there is a lot of threats coming from the families as well. In Pakistan, where women are frequently the target of honor killings, acid attacks and abuse, online threats can easily translate into real-world danger. Eman experienced this firsthand after organizing a protest at her university to break the taboo around menstruation. She and her friends started